which is the blog, which is a project of the Center for American Progress Action Fund. Uh, the idea was that we were going to see comprehensive immigration reform this year, and that I was going to get to put my long hat on every single day, analyze policy, and basically just be a real nerd. Uh, but soon we started to realize that uh, the window for immigration reform is really closing, and what my job has really become is fighting disinformation and hate. And the face of this hate is actually very organized. And I think people who don't follow the immigration issue uh, very closely are always shocked to see how organized they are. So the Southern Poverty Law Center actually calls it the Nativist Lobby. And it's made up of three main organizations which serve different purposes. Uh, one is the Center for Immigration Studies. They're the research arm of the Nativist Lobby. And they really present themselves as a mutual think tank. If you look at the information that they produce, they actually don't have anything good to say about immigrants at all. Uh, it's usually, you know, they'll say that immigrants are bad for the environment and that they're uh, contributing to global climate change. They'll blame immigrants for uh, the global recession, for the housing bubble, for everything. Um, there's also the Federation for American Immigration Reform. And their legal arm is actually the Immigration Reform Law Institute, and that is where the lawyer Chris Kovac works. And he's the one who actually um, wrote the Arizona law, and who isn't just behind the Arizona law, he's actually behind most of the anti-immigrant laws we've seen in our country, um, from the legislation which just uh, passed in Fremont, Nebraska, to Arizona, to um, Pennsylvania. Basically, it's, it's a national enterprise that they're running, and he profits off of it. Um, the last group is Numbers USA, and they're a grassroots arm. So when there's um, legislation in Congress, they're the ones who bring up the cell phones of the congressmen and basically scare the crap out of them so that they vote against or for um, uh, certain pieces of legislation based on immigration. Now, the main founder and funder of these groups is a man named John Tanner. He's actually um, a wealthy ophthalmologist who has a side project of uh, founding these anti-immigrant groups. Uh, he was very into eugenics a few years ago. He sees himself as a population control advocate. Um, but he's also very concerned about whites being outbred. Uh, this is literally his words. He still sits on the board of FAIR, and he was responsible for really giving the money to most of these organizations so that they could get started. Um, so the title of this panel is Strange Bedfellows. And the great thing about the immigration reform movement is that it really is strange about fellows. You have the NAACP, you have unions like the UFCW, you have Latino groups like NCLR. Now, what the anti-immigrant right has done is that they have sought to exploit uh, the, that association and the allies that it has created. So they have these front groups, and let me just name a couple of them. Uh, one is called Progressives for Immigration Reform. Uh, they, they're very big on the environmental argument, saying that progressives should actually be against immigration reform um, and should be against higher levels of immigration because it contributes uh, to environmental degradation. Uh, you Don't Speak For Me is a Latino group, and it's made up of Latinos who are against immigration reform. Another one is the Coalition for the American Worker. Uh, they present themselves as a labor-friendly group that uh, tries to argue that uh, is bad for labor. And the other one is Choose Black America, which just so recently doesn't exist, but that's made up of African Americans who are against immigration reform. The funny thing is, if you look at the people behind these groups, they're all from FAIR, they're all from CIS, they're all from Members USA. Uh, the groups themselves are made up of maybe a handful of people borrowed from these different groups, so they're not really uh, new groups. Uh, it's funny that one is called You Don't Speak For Me, because I'm not really sure who speaks for them. I, I think it's John Tannen, quite frankly. Um, I think the scary thing is that SB 1070 has really mobilized the Tea Party. For a while, you saw Duke Army of Freedom Works, who really credits himself for being the mastermind of the Tea Party movement, uh, putting forth an immigrant-friendly approach. And, uh, you know, he isn't for immigration reform. He thinks we should privatize the immigration system. Uh, but he appreciates immigrants and their contribution to the U.S. Uh, what SB 1070 has done is that it sort of split the Tea Party uh, movement. And I think officially at this point, uh, the actual Tea Party Nation 
uh, is for SB 1070 and against immigration reform. And now we have this really mobilized group of people who are suddenly naming immigration as one of their hot topics. And then you also have groups like the Minutemen, Minutemen and um, Americans for Legal, Legal Immigration, PAC, and the neo-Nazis who are also heavily involved in these efforts. And also there's the House Immigration Reform Caucus, uh, which is part of the House of Representatives. It's made up of mostly Republicans who basically fight to make sure that every piece of legislation that comes out doesn't benefit a single immigrant. Um, the chairman of it used to be Tom Tank 